And uh, this is the idea of output can change according to, to some circumstances, like uh, motion, like uh, other abnormal conditions, like uh, imbalances in the hormone production. And uh, to get the normal blood pressure, it means that cardiac output must be normal and peripheral resistance normal. If there is a change, like uh, increase in the cardiac output or increase in the peripheral resistance, also blood pressure increases. If there is a, decre a decrease in cardiac output, and uh, a decrease in the peripheral resistance, we also have a hypo, lower blood hypotension, lower blood pressure. And uh, when you consider this, uh, it's like uh, Ohm's law, by comparing the current, like uh, blood flow, and the electromotor force as pressure and resistance we gain blood pressure equal blood flow is the symbolized by cardiac output times peripheral resistance. People can develop, for instance, hypertension by increase of cardiac output, in which case, for instance, in hypertroidism. Also, people can develop blood pressure, hypertension, if there is aldosterone, hyperproduction for aldosterone, for instance. The two, we can have a cardiac output increment. For peripheral resistance, suppose there is a stenosis of uh, renal artery or hyperproduction of catecholamine with vasoconstriction of arteries of blood vessels can also lead to this hypertension. Suppose you have a diarrhea and the cardiac output decreases. People develop lower level of blood pressure, hypertension. When you consider the blood vessels as, as uh, tubes, we have a laminar flow. And uh, blood flow inside, in the center of the tube, is greater than at the level of walls. Because at the level of walls, there is like a resistance due to um, a movement of fluid or move or contact force is like a resistance is like a, the cause of this resistance. The following layer, um, thin layer of blood contact with the wall of the vessel does not move. This when there is a rupture, for instance, or the, when there is a layer trauma, do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, yes, we understand. Okay, let us move. No, lecture. No, when there is a lecture. Lecture. we are not understanding. Mm -hmm. Are you, 
may be connected to a probe. The probe is the connection or what is the... Is it a connection or... I closed the cell. I didn't respond to the peripheral resistance. Hmm? Peripheral resistance. Hmm. What do you know by resistance? Resistance is it like a, a, a negative force which try to decrease the 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 velocity. Suppose there is a atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is hardening of blood vessels. This is there is an increase in, um, in resistance. Suppose if they have uh, uh, high levels of red blood cells, also there is a decrease in velocity. There is a, there is a increase in resistance. For laminar for lamina flow, if we consider the blood vessels as tubes, the contact of blood on the wall of vessels of blood vessels, this this blood at the, at the, at the level of contact, there is no good flow. There is does not does, does not move. Here, it is the cause of most of the time, the cause of clotting. Because if the, there is a delay in the blood flow, this is the, can be the cause of some clot, some clot formation. The following layer at the interior of the first one moves slowly. The following layer moves at a higher speed and so on. The speed being the greatest at the center of the stream. At the center, the blood flow is high. For turbulent flow, here we consider velocity, the diameter of tube of blood vessel and the, the density of fluid and the viscosity of the fluid. And we follow this formula of Reynolds. We, uh, when we consider this number of the Reynolds, which we consider velocity, the diameter of the tube, and uh, density of the uh, Viscosity. As you see, the viscosity is like the resistance. Okay? The more velocity of fluid. Yes. May I share the screen of, of the velocity? The screen? Yes. Share the slide where velocity is. We are still on the slide one thirty four. I'm going to say, I will get a And the show. And this is problem.
Do you see slide? Yes. I, I repeat this slide. Uh, here for turbulent flow, we consider the velocity, the speed of uh, flowing. And also we consider the diameter, diameter of tube of blood vessels and dens the density and the viscosity. And uh, we have uh, Reynolds, Reynolds number. This number is from the velocity, the product of velocity, the density and the, and the diameter of the viscosity. Here, the viscosity, as you see, is like uh, the, the factor of resistance. With the blood, density is known. It is like 1.05, okay? Gram per this unit. And the viscosity is about 0 0.035. Okay, and the node number does not go beyond 2,000 in human being. The higher the Reynold number, the greater probability of production of turbulence. Here, in human being, most of the time we have this laminar flow. And when we consider the pulse, arterial pulse, the frequency of pulse is the same as the frequency of the cardiac contraction. And the vigor of the pulse is the reflect of the cardiac contraction strength. The blood intrudes in the aorta during the system, create a pressure web that travels along arteries. When we check, for instance, this pass, it is not the blood pumped in the heart, which reaches this zone. But remember, it's a wave. It is not the control of blood you hear. Is it a wave? And this wave expands arterial wall and that expansion is perceived as a pass on perfection. You can check this pass at, at the level of artery, even at long distance. The level propagation speed is about to four meters per second in the aorta, eight meters per second great arteries and 16 meters per second in small arteries in, in the young adult. As you see, the more you get small blood vessels, the more the speed is increased. And the pressure in the aorta, in the great arteries Picture in the young. come again. Picture come again. On what? On the blood pressure? Yes. On all, all parts? Yeah, on arterial parts. Mm -hmm. Arterial parts. It is a wave, it is not the quantity of blood. Because the speed of wave is greater than the, the, the speed of blood. As you see, the more you have uh, small arteries, the more speed of that wave is increased. 
You see, in the aorta, you have a four mitral per second. And in small arteries, we have, uh, we can reach 60 meters per second. Even you can, you can uh, check this arterial pass on the on, uh, uh, on small arteries at the same time for other great arteries because the speed is not uh, the, the same. You can check, for instance, uh, temporal, temporal artery are the same as radial artery. You can, you, you can check, for instance, um, at the level of the carotid, but for, at the same time for another small artery which are not uh, on the same level. And uh, for pressure, in normal individual adult people, systolic pressure is about 120 millimeters of mercury, and the systolic pressure is about 70 millimeters of mercury. And we have so called pulse pressure. It's the difference between the systolic and the historic pressure, a normal value is about 50 meters of mercury. Of the mean pressure, by adding to the historic pressure one third of the pulse pressure, we obtain a reasonable exact value of 87 millimeters of mercury. See, for instance, we can have uh, blood pressure, so speak, 140. Diastolic, 50 millimeters of mercury. Is it no more? There is some some way problem. Try to no. is not to know. Yes. But what does it do? You see the, the difference is it is it too high? The difference is too high. It's too high. And the systolic systolic means that there is rejection, for instance or there is the increase in the resistance, but during the diastolic, cardiac output is like uh, low. It means that during if you have uh, feeling, there is a problem. And uh, suppose there is uh, aortic stenosis. Remember where uh, is located uh, our, our they try to, to think about we have a mitral stenosis okay suppose you have a narrowing of opening of the valve during the contraction okay there is a lower quantity entering okay it means that the pressure is how how we can you qualify this pressure? Is it hard and what is narrowing? Narrow it. During the, during the, in the case of mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, Remember, during the contraction, there is uh, a decrease in cardiac output because the quantity uh, pumped by the heart cannot reach the aorta because there is narrowing. There is some quantity remaining in the left ventricles. Systolic also decreases. And during, during the diastolic, 
there is no problem okay and as you see the and the, this uh, pulse pressure is is low and there's uh, some factors affecting arterial blood pressure remember you have a cardiac output then once the cardiac output increases the better the blood pressure and this can lead also to hypertension we have also peripheral vascular resistance if you have a resistance to blood flow also you can have hypertension if the resistance is reduced in the case of vasodilation remember if the tonus vascular tonus is low also you can have hypo hypertension and so also you can consider the volume of circulating blood if we lose blood in the term of diarrhea in the term of of vomiting in the time of uh, sweating or uh, polyuria also you can have a lower level of blood pressure and viscosity viscosity also is also an indicator in the case of anemia in the case of anemia you have uh, the quantity of red blood cells is too low and it can assist to hypertension Elasticity of vessels, the hardening by accumulation of uh, unwanted material, like um, high level of uh, calcium, also, if the elasticity of blood vessels is low, we can have uh, this uh, high potential. Blood pressure increases increased cardiac output, peripheral vascular resistance, volume, volume of blood, viscosity of blood, and rigidity of vessels. Or this is this is like a, uh, like a summary. For capillary saturation. Here, what we consider uh, the flow of pleasure, the level of the capillaries. We have uh, uh, two millimeters of mercury. When we consider the end of uh, artery, small artery, and the 15 millimeters of mercury, and we consider the the starting point of venous extremity it means that between when we do the difference between at least 17 meters mercury and here the blood flow is low but we have a, a rich capillary network here this this low speed of blood flow is a helper factor for exchange between the two medium from blood to interstitial space or from interstitial space to the blood because some product can can move from intravascular system to for nourishment of uh, of uh, tissues and also we have, this, we have some product from tissues metabolism to the blood vessels for elimination through whatever flow by expression, by sweat or sweat, sweat or by urinary system. 
and substances pass across intra intracellular junction by vesicular transport, or in the case of a liposoluble substance by diffusion. We have uh, respiratory gases like oxygen and uh, CO2, dioxide, carbon. From the capillary lumen to the tissues, we have uh, oxygen. From tissue to capillary lumen, we have uh, CO2. CO2 is like uh, the is like uh, the end product of catabolism, uh, the mechanism ensured by oxygen, which participates in the, in the metabolism by by Krebs chain. Remember, in the mitochondria, this oxygen is the uh, indicator of uh, internal res respiration and also we have nutritive substances from the capillary lumen to the tissues here I consider glucose we consider amino acid triglyceride and some vitamins and also we have waste product from tissue to the capillary lumen and uh, to have uh, this mechanism of exchange, we have uh, some forces. We have diffusion forces depend on the concentration gradient. And also we have uh, filtration forces depend on the filtration pressure. And the filtration pressure of water equals hydrostatic pressure minus on quantic pressure minus interstitial pressure. Here we have a formula. At the level at your side, at your end, we have a member of 32 meters of mercury. At the level of On quantic pressure is about 25. Interstitial pressure is about one meters of mercury. When we do submission and difference, we consider the level arterial side, we have at least six millimeters of mercury. This is the filtration to our tissues. And also for venous side extremities, we have uh, 15, remember, minus on quantic pressure 25, this cannot change, minus 1, interstitial pressure. And you see we have minus 11 millimeter of mercury. If we remember, fluid moves from high pressure to lower pressure. Because at the level of venous side, we have a negative charge minus 11 millimeters mercury compared to positive 6 millimeters mercury at the level of, of arterial side. It means that there is a continuation of, of uh, blood from arterial end through capillaries to reach venous side because there is no obstacle and suppose we have we have a problem at the level of venous side like a tumor like a whatever and this uh, on quantic pressure suppose it is low maybe 15 Minus, minus, uh, for instance, uh, 
18 minus 1. We have how, how many millimeters we have? It is about minus 4. And in this case, because we have not 11, but the flow can decrease can decrease but there is no total obstacle because the pressure when you consider arterial side and the venous side arterial side is greater than than venous side but if there is uh, increase in venous side the blood flow is not <coughs> facilitated. Okay. And uh, for lymphatic, for lymphatic I plasma protein is known as oncotic pressure. If do we have a low, we have a tendency of more, more liquid to enter in interstitial space. If albumin is low, if plasma protein are, are low, we have a, this pressure decreases at the level of the capillaries. And final, because the, there is an increment of pressure in interstitial, there is a tendency of more of fluid to enter in interstitial space, and there is a development. Mm -hmm. of Do you understand? Hello. Yes. Thank you. And. Uh, here for lymphatic capillary is easy to uh, to retain again fluid and protein which cannot follow this process of capillary saturation uh, to differentiate the problem of lymphatic saturation and uh, uh, venous venous saturation if there is obstacle for lymphatic edema, accumulation of fluid in the lymphatic vessels it is not uh, so it is not repeating. It is the tap. Okay, and uh, for blood vessels, for venous system, when you try to put the pressure, there is depression. This we know we we say it is a pitting edema. Uh, the case uh, you know it is elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is the uh, bad bad saturation, blood saturation, uh, lymphatic system by closure by closure by closed lymph occlusion of lymphatic vessels due to tumors, due to some worms. Known as the various bankrupt or okay, those can enhance obstruction and uh, and uh, bad lymphatic circulation. And uh, lymphatic flow is due to movement of skeletal muscle. To negative to the negative intratoracic pressure during inspiration lecture. Yes. Can you help us to this obstruction? They can they can develop what? Now repeating edema. Okay. Yes. But the target is first of all, is it to to diagnose worms before 
before inflammation, before the development of rheumatoid If rheumatoid disease are well developed, once it can die, we can give a treatment that, but there is no recovery. There is no recovery. Unless, if you have a, a good surgeon who can collect blood and lymphatic vessels. And uh, here for lymphatic, we need the skeletal muscles movement. And also, to the sucking effect exerted by the rapid flow of flow, blood flow in the vein into which the lymphatic is terminate and the rhythmic contraction of the wall of the great lymphatic vessels. And lymphatic vessels also have valves that prevent lymphatic. The contraction of muscles push the lymph upward toward the heart. The contraction of the wall of lymphatic vessels constitute constitute the principal lymph propulsion factor. And uh, the function of lymphatic circulation is to evacuate a protein that is kept at the level of capillary circulation and to restitute them to the blood. Remember, during the blood circulation, we have some protein which enter, which enter, which cannot follow because there is no loss of protein. Remember, they, they have plasma protein, but at the level of capillary, some can enter and they are removed from, from blood blood intravascular system they enter in the interstitial space to to restrict this we have a chance of the function of lymphatic saturation to restore this escaped protein into blood saturation and also we have appreciable quantity of protein into the interstitial fluid at the level of the liver and intestine and less quantity at the level of other tissues. The quantity of protein in that manner in one day is about 50% of the total circulating plasma protein. You see, we have a chance because our protein are not uh, lost during this uh, blood and lymphatic saturation. Mm. The quantity of fluid that goes out through the wall of the capillaries is higher than the one that enters. But the difference pass into the lymphatic and the fluid returns to the blood. Even if we have fluid, which, which goes out through the lymphatic, also can return into blood saturation through venous system. This prevents the rising of interstitial fluid pressure and the permit renewal of the interstitial fluid. In the kidney, the formation of maximally concentrated urine depends on the existence of intact lymphatic saturation. And for venous saturation, The venous, the volume of vein can change. Okay. We have the gravitational effect here when we are upstanding. 
we have a this gravitational effect. It means that the flow of blood from the lower limbs, abdomen, to reach the heart is difficult due to this gravity, due the effect of gravity. Because there is accumulation of blood into lower limbs, okay? This can reduce the venous return, they can reduce the quantity of blood returning to the heart. And also can reduce the cardiac output and blood pressure. Example is um, when, suppose you are a policeman, okay? You, you, you stay on the road for eight hours in upstanding position. You can develop this accumulation of blood in the lower limbs with a decrease in the venous return and at the end, cardiac output also decrease and you can fall down due to hypertension. Can you develop fainting? Okay? And also, suppose you are a teacher in primary school, you teach mathematics, you start at 8 in the morning until noon and you are not experienced in this kind of upstanding. You can develop uh, accumulation of fluid in lower limbs, a decrease in the venous return, and then a decrease in cardiac output and hypertension. You fall down. And also the organism defends itself by increasing the tonus of vein to combat, to fight, and to fight this uh, gravitational effect. We have uh, this mechanism of increasing tonus of veins. And uh, how blood can reach the heart? in the venous saturation. To reach the heart, there is a need of some, some factors. Here I consider a factor, the factor number one is the flowing pressure. Flowing pressure, remember, the pressure moves from the blood moves from the zone of high pressure to the zone of lower pressure. When we consider the artery, in the artery, the pressure is high compared to the venous system. And from venous system to the heart, left right atria, also in the right atria, we have a lower pressure compared to the venous system. Here we say 50, 50 millimeters smart in the venous side, but we are at the level of the capillaries. And at the level of right atria, we have about zero. And also we have to consider the effect of the contraction of the right ventricle. Increase of atrial volume. Decrease of the pressure in the right atria, which contributes to suck blood. If the right ventricle contract, contra, contracts, if there is a contraction of right ventricle, it means that if there is a contraction, there is acting. The contour of blood is pumped in the 
uh, pulmonary artery. And there is filling, filling of atrium at the end. And the volume in the atria, atrium also increases. A decrease of the pressure in the right atrium. After this, there is a need of blood. There is a blood from, from where from uh, vena cava. Also have a respiratory pump. At inspiration, there is an increase of volume of the thorax. Hence, a decrease of intrathoracic pressure. The, the return of venous blood to the heart is favored. Okay? If the volume increases, the there is a decrease in pressure. And if there is a decrease in the pressure, there is a good blood flow from the zone where the, where the, the pressure is high to the negative zone of pressure. And we have also muscular pump. The contraction of the contraction of skeletal muscle compress the veins, decrease the venous capillary capacity, thereby favoring forward the propulsion of blood. M muscular relaxation decrease pressure in the vein opening of the valve and the forward flowing of blood and finally the effect of vasomotor center to enhance vascular tonus okay i think for this blood saturation is okay and also we can have a look, we can have a look on um, blood coagulation. Or blood coagulation. Last question. Uh, are you here on uh, hemostasis? Extra question. Yes. What's, on the the normal range, what's the normal range of pulse pressure? Normal range of pulse pressure. Uh, this can change. Can you change but you can have to consider when you, you, the the number you get in the, this uh, mod, this uh, syllabus this is for adult young can you change according when i have for instance uh, 7 um, 78 okay 78 millimeters much as the asterisk and uh, and uh, one uh, 138. I am in normal range in the term of pressure because the asteroid is in normal range and the sister is in normal range. Is in normal range. But what we consider is the values of, of uh, diastolic pressure and and the what and uh, systolic pressure. Systolic pressure. Yeah, when you we try to understand this uh, 
pathophysiology in a term of the normal limit of good blood pressure, we emphasize on, on this. Can you change also this uh, very can you change? Okay, that is to mean that when the systolic and diastolic pressure are in normal range, also mm -hmm. the pulse pressure and mean pressure are in normal range. Yes. Okay. Are you here on hemostasis? Yes, lecturer. Yeah. And uh, we, in normal condition, in normal condition, we have no cl clotting formation and uh, no clot formation in the blood vessels because we have a uh, good, good uh, product, heparin, and the uh, other molecule. We, which can block this formation of clot. And also we have, uh, but once there is a rupture, rupture of blood, blood vessels, there is a formation of protein to stop breathing. Hemostasis is like a hemostatic mechanism that aim at maintaining blood within the blood vessels. The target of hemostasis is to guarantee to maintain blood within the blood vessels. To stop bleeding, sealing of holes that occur in the holes of blood vessels. In other, word, in other word, it is to prevent spontaneous hemorrhage. Maintaining the fluid character of the blood. We have uh, different mechanisms. If there is a rupture of blood vessels, the second, the first uh, Impact is vascular spasm, followed by platelet aggregation and blood coagulation and development, developing of a fibrous tissue in the blood clot to close the wall, the hole. For vascular spasm, this occur immediately after rupture, the rupture of or section of blood vessels. The vascular or apheid contract. The vasoconstriction is due to serotonin. Serotonin is flow from platelet and other vasoconstrictor substance released by platelet. Here, you understand you understand very well the effect the 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 role of platelet platelet remember blood cells and during hemostasis they produce serotonin and other vasoconstrictor substances to enhance vasoconstriction And also we have uh, platelet aggregation, formation of platelet plaque and or transient hemostatic plaque. The contact of platelet even collagen, adhesion of platelet, platelet secret also ADP, adenosine diphosphate, which in turn, activate nearby platelet, make them adhesive. And this cycle is like a repetitive cycle. And the final target is to is the formation of platelet plug. When you 
First of all, remember there is a rapture. After rapture, there is vasoconstriction. This is self-action of blood vessels. Okay? After that, there is a secretion of serotonin from, from platelet to enhance vasoconstriction. Okay? And also we have uh, this uh, platelet aggregation induced by adenosine phosphate and the collagen. What happens? What happens? Hello? We in. What happens? And uh, for blood coagulation, and uh, we have factors known as co coagulant and anticoagulant in the blood. In the blood, we have blood, we have a pro coagulant and anticoagulant. The anticoagulant predominate and the blood does not coagulate in a normal condition without uh, abnormality. When they are vascular lesions, the activity of procoagulant substance predominate because there is a rupture. And uh, for the coagulation mechanisms, we have uh, two, two systems. We have the input. What? Hmm? Make an unmute. The contact and the extrinsic system, there is a factor that does not belong to the blood. This, this factor is the tissue thromboplastic. Okay. We have also cotrombin group. We so you see that we have uh, cotrombin groups uh, formed by factor two, seven, nine, ten. All have a similar structure and the properties. Bio biochemical properties and they are synthesized by liver and vitamin K is necessary to the decarboxylation, decarboxylation or glutamic residue and to the acquisition of the biological activity. Here, as you see, without the vitamin K, this coagulation cannot occur because factor 2, factor 7, factor 9 and 10 are no are inactive. Here, it is a 
the role of vitamin K in this process of coagulation. Even in the hospital, we give vitamin K to treat some coagulation disorder. And the fundamental reaction of coagulation, remember, first of all, the transient homostatic plug, okay, is type is um, increased by and convert into a definite and in the final clot by fibrin. The fundamental reaction in blood coagulation is the transformation of a soluble plasma protein, fibrinogen, into insoluble fibrin. Factors preventing spontaneous coagulations. We have the factor of endothelial surface. The endothelial surface is smooth. It means that the intima um, layer of blood vessels is smooth. And this smoothness prevents the contra contact activation of intrinsic coagulation system. The second uh, monomolecular layer of negatively charged protein adsorbed at internal surface of the endothelia, which is the coagulation factors and the platelets preventing the activation of coagulation. It means that also most of coagulation factors have a negative charge. Okay? Because the two monomolecular layer and factors, because they have a negative charge, there is no attraction. And also if uh, heparin. This is the anticoagulant. The coagulant is it is in our organism, and also the reaction is limiting the coagulation or destroying the formation of clot. We have formation of flow of activated factor five of antithrombin three. And also you have a withdrawal by the liver of certain activated coagulation, coagulation factors. The supply of coagulation effect is limited to the degree of their utilization during the coagulation. Okay? Absorption of thrombin of the of the fibrin network, prevention of extens extens extension of the clot. There was a fibrinolytic system whose active component is plasmin, fibrinolysin, and then produced by the activation of saturating protein plasminogen, plasminolysis fibrin and fibrinogen. And this is the production of fibrinogen degradation product that inhibit thrombin. Okay? And uh, suppose uh, people unwillingly, they, they have internal hemorrhage and diagnosed internal hemorrhage. Okay? And uh, after two hours, they are oriented oriented to hospital for sterectomy. Sterectomy is the removal of, of uterus. Okay? For this case, 
you you will give you blood transfusion or you wait what is your concern are you following this is the case test case clinical case Following this slide, this slide, this slide, which is in the, in the front front of you, we have we withdraw during during uh, hemorrhage. We lose more uh, clotting factors because they are totally used in 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 trying this form clot formation, and the liver for the production of other other clotting factors is it takes time is a period of time and and the most package of clotting factor is the uh, uh, factors is used it means that this case is in favor of breeding because collection to support this use of partner clotting factor is not done and for for her there is a need of clotting factor okay to collect this hemorrhage it will really be difficult because there is no longer production of clotting factors okay and uh, the other case and uh, uh, mm, x man x man with chronic liver disease with chronic liver disease uh, for 10 years developed spontaneous episode of breeding what do you think what is the cause of this breeding mm -hmm. i am waiting your answer Did you understand? No, would you please repeat again? Yeah, X man. Okay. We've we've, we've chronic uh, liver disease for ten years. He developed episode of spontaneous bleeding. What do you think? What what is the cause of this breeding? It is not a rupture of blood vessels. What do you think? Hmm? Try. Can you develop, for instance, epistaxis and develop uh, whatever? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think the progression factors are, are very mm -hmm. low. Concentration of progression factors are very low. Mm -hmm. Why? That's why. 
Why? Mm -hmm. I showed the answer. You see the answer? Most of those protein, those factors are synthesized and produced by liver, hepatocyte. Okay? And because the liver also has not its normal function, these factors, the coagulation factor also are depressed. And also, in liver disease, vitamin K is also low. This because there is no coagulation factor, Associative lagak, vitamin K, people with chronic liver disease can develop easily breeding. Okay? Means it is by the cause of those coagulant factors. Yeah. And uh, what else? Vitamin K. Yeah. But also we have some other the disorders which can also um, which can produce easy easily occurrence of breeding, like what we say hemophilia. Okay, we will see in in the Pathophysiology. We have some disease which are in favor of bleeding. Uh, for hematopoiesis, hematopoiesis is the red blood cells, many white blood cells, in blood are formed in the bone marrow. I think you know what is bone marrow. Do you understand bone marrow? And also in fetus, blood cells are also formed in the liver and spleen. Okay? Active, active cellular marrow is called lead marrow. Hematopoietic steam cells are bone marrow cells capable of producing all types of blood, blood cells. All blood cells are from bone marrow. The difference to the, they differentiate into committed stem cells for all progenitor cells. Progenitor cells form the various differentiated type of blood cells. The bone marrow contains pools of committed stem cells for granulocyte, megakaryocyte, lymphocyte, and erythrocyte. Granulocyte and macrophage come from the same committed stem cell.
And uh, specific necessary for erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is the production of red blood cells. We have uh, minerals, which are necessary, crucial for this erythropoiesis. We have a copper, cobalt, iron. Most of iron used in erythropo is already in the organism. Concentration of iron ferrous, ferrous iron, in the plasma is this. At least 100 microgram per deciliter. The country from the diet will compensate for the obligatory losses. In the four, 24 hours. And uh, the ion is absorbed under the ferrous form rather than the ferric form. And elementally, ferric ion is transformed into ferrous ion at the level of the stomach in the presence of vitamin C. The rest of ferrous is bound to a protein apophertine to form ferritin, ion bound under the form of ferritin is the is uh, under the form of ferritin in the intestinal cell is lost in the in the stool. Okay. Vitaminic substances for erythropoiesis. We have vitamin B12, cobalamine, from food of animal, or, animal origin at the level of ileum by active process. We have also Intrinsic factor. This is the glycoprotein synthesized in the stomach by parietal cells. The intrinsic factor from a complex with vitamin B12 that protects the vitamin B12 from digestion. If you feel the role of coenzyme in the synthesis of nucleic acid. I also have a vitamin B9, folic acid. Absorption also occurs at the level of small intestine. Tetrahydrofolate is a donor of one carbon groups, such as methyl groups. It is necessary in the synthesis of DNA. And also we have a vitamin B6. Coenzyme in the synthesis for M and the vitamin C is a reducing agent, reduces ferric, ferric ion at the level of the stomach, reduces folic acid at the level of absorbing cells of the small intestine. And also for Regulation of erythropoiesis, you have the erythropoietic activity of the bone marrow is controlled by erythropoietin, which stimulates the differentiation of committed cells, stem cells, into proerythroblasts. Erythropoietin is secreted by a kidney and the liver. Erythropoietic exerts its action mainly during hypoxia, which stimulates its secretion. 
Erythropoietin is also essential to maintain a normal erythropoiesis. I think you understand when there is a chronic uh, kidney disease, when there is a chronic kidney disease, there is uh, occurrence, high incidence of uh, anemia. Why? Because this erythropoietin is totally reduced or absent. Because the, you see, 85 percent is the flow is the synthesized and produced by kidney okay and uh, when there is a lack of vitamin c vitamin c also can develop anemia because this vitamin is like a reducer is like a because this ferric ion, when there is no reduction of this ferric ion, this ferric ion can enter our blood and has no effect because the ion we need is the ferrous form. Okay? And to have the activity also, folic acid must be reduced. The reducer is vitamin C. Okay? And uh, for granulopoiesis, the reserve of matura granulocyte in the bone marrow is about four times the number of saturating granulocyte. The regulation is not clear. Regression of neutropoiesis, production of neutrophils, we have vericocytosis in the using factor. Its product is increased by neutropenia. Neutropenia is a low quantity for neutrophils. To stimulate the discharge of neutrophils in the blood from the store, in the, in the bone marrow. It increases the speed of cell division and the number of mitosis between the precursor, precursor and the matura cells. Bacterial toxins remains of remains of tissues stimulate the bone marrow. For thrombocytopoiesis, is stimulated by thrombo poietin and depends on the number of certain saturating thrombocyte. The concentration of thrombopoietin is increased by thrombopoietic stimulating factor. Here, what you can um, summarize here, the bone marrow is like the machine of synthesis of blood cells because most of granulocyte, erythrocyte, platelet are from this, this pool. And to have a to have a effect, we have some some improvement of other material like for red blood cells we have a need of vitamins vitamin b6 vitamin b9 b12 vitamin c which act as a coenzyme or reduce a reducer okay and also there is involvement of uh, cobalt copper and iron in it production of red blood cell. I think for, for cardiovascular system, you can stop here and restart this uh, 
issue of a statutory system. Right, there, no? Hmm? Right. Sure. <laughs> Eh, <laughs> 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 